<laughs> Looks like Joe Biden has been caught cooking the books on America's crime crisis. Dems in the media hyping crime stats from the Bureau, which show that murder and violent crime are down. Last year, the United States had one of the lowest rates of all violent crime, of all violent crimes, in more than 50 years. I mean, I just debunk some of the things Trump is pushing about crime. He says crime is worse than ever, when in most places in the U.S. is actually going down. The truth is that violent crime skyrocketed under Donald Trump's presidency. Uh, crime has fallen under Joe Biden's presidency. Crime rates keep dropping. Crime, uh, in fact, the rate is lower now than when Donald Trump was in office. I can safely walk my dog mm -hmm. to the Capitol today in a way that you couldn't do uh, when uh, when we all got here. Right. <laughs> Lot of but the Washington Examiner <laughs> crunching the numbers. Finally, someone did it, and it's a bunch of BS. The FBI has been using a complicated, faulty new system, which major cities have been struggling to comply with. The Fed's then forced to start estimating crime stats and thus undercounting total offenses. All right, Harold, I got to go to you because you were one of the people that you're very sensible. You're like an old school Democrat about crime. And I could tell you were struggling with this when you were, we were talking about the data. Uh, I'm not because the I agree, I agree with you. I don't yeah, but remember the data that they were pushing didn't match our eyeballs. Right. We knew that the decarceration, the defunding, the politicalization of the Justice Department, all this stuff was destroying us. But they were telling us no. They were gaslighting us. Well, I, I don't know the, the the politicization of the Justice Department. I'm not quite where you guys. Criminal are, justice, where, but, I should have said. But where with that, I agree. Where I am is. We've said on the, on the show, if you feel unsafe, no one, no amount yes. of stats, no number of stats are going to tell you you're not. You said something also, Judge, when Secretary Buttigieg, I would assume that the secretary has security when he's out uh, walking yeah. his dog. So I would feel comfortable and safe if, I were, if, I, were, if I were him, too. A couple things. We've said on the show, I, I, for the life of me, I don't understand why uh, Vice President Harris, whom I have a great deal of respect for and, and, and like, you're one of the great prosecutors this country ever had. Why you wouldn't go around the country, gather up all the great practices around the country, and whether it's reducing homicides, whether it's reducing assaults, whether it's reducing thefts, whether it's reducing gun violence. Dallas, you did a great thing on the Dallas uh, police chief, Dane, on, uh, you and Bill yeah. did uh, a few, few months back, talking about how the morale of the police is up there, their, their crime numbers are down, and I think the mayor even switched, he was a Democrat, switched to be a Republican. These are the kinds of things, not that you want people switching from Democrat or Republican, but let's give us the best practices and let's figure out how we adopt these around the country. And something I think we all fully agree on, cashless bail is not working. It hasn't worked. If you arrest someone for violent crime, you can't let them back out 10 minutes later. We've seen unbelievably disgusting statistics and fixable statistics here in New York where we understand that a small number of people are committing the majority of the crimes over and over and over again. There seems to be a fix to this. Keep people in jail. There's nothing wrong with spending more money on police officers. There's nothing wrong with spending more money on giving police officers the equipment they need, as well as investing in the kinds of things in communities to help get people to not commit crimes. But when people commit a crime, they need to be arrested. When people commit a violent crime, they shouldn't get out on their own recognizance or because a group of legislators thinks it might be the right thing to do. Mm. People in New York ought to unelect these people. We ought to do it all across the country, and we ought to change these laws. Can we just get a, a still of Jen Psaki with that, uh, in that interview there? Yeah. Never do an interview when you're on the toilet. Yeah, it's a good, that's a good look. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just not, it's not a good look. Okay. So, hey, Dana. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the failure of this justice, it, 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 they, in this article, they said there's a rising share of victims no longer reporting crimes, right. probably because they feel like no one's going to do anything. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's like, what's the point? And um, Peter's been talking about this in Britain for a long time. That, like, if you had a robbery in your house or your car got broken into, you call the police and they'll say, yeah, just like write a full report for your insurance. They don't send anybody. But, but remember the story we did last week? Mm -hmm. They will definitely send police to your house if you get reported for doing some sort of like hate speech in a meme on Instagram over there. Also, I go back to this, learned this from George W. Bush, that you cannot fix a problem that you don't measure properly. Mm. And that was in regards to education, and that's how you mm. ended up with the No Child Left Behind Act. Um, the government has their head in the sand when it comes to crime. To Harold, when you said that if you feel unsafe, I mean, how many people that you talk to anywhere, I don't judge, I think you traveled this weekend, people ask, are you okay? Do you feel okay there? And so, yes, people are aware of it everywhere. Failure to report is a decrease in crime, but let's also talk about how the Biden administration, by doing this, is hurting these police chiefs and the 
if you look at that, almost all of them have been people of color. Mm -hmm. have, how many women police chiefs have resigned right. because they will not get help or support from the prosecutors or from an administration who says we're going to do something about it? It's a great point. And, Judge, it, oh, so the Washington Examiner did this. We've been talking about this. They were the first person to do the work because they were the only per people that didn't weren't scared of upsetting a narrative. Think about all those other reporters out there who just who saw what we saw, but like were like, ah, eh, you know what? We'll go with the we'll go with the data. Yeah, the the, the data deniers like Kathy Hochul, yeah. who told us we were all crazy that there was no crime in the subways and that the crime is a figment of our imagination. Uh, and uh, yeah, Jen Psaki, who actually said when we were on Fox, she pointed to it and said, "What are they talking about? Why are they so focused on crime?" Look, this administration and the whole point of this block is that the FBI is underreporting the number of crimes in this country. Why? Because the Democrats want power. That is the ultimate game here. Here's the problem. They, they, uh, they say the economy is great under Bidenomics. We know it's not. We know what eggs cost. We know what meat costs. We know how much more it costs to live every year. You don't need to be a genius. But what you have to re uh, realize now is that when Milwaukee, in their own local report, says that robberies have gone up 7 percent, but the FBI reports that robberies have gone down 13 percent in Milwaukee, somebody's lying, okay? And in 63 percent of the departments in this country are reporting less crime. Why? Because the FBI has created new onerous uh, crime stats that take hours to analyze every crime. It's like the New York City Council has just passed a law saying, we want the police to do more paperwork every time they have an interaction with a human being, which provides for less police defense on the street. Mm -hmm. They are liars and it's political. But the bottom line is you cannot uh, you cannot function in a, in a society where you don't have enough police, where there isn't enough 911 uh, response time. We are not safe. And, you know, everybody agrees, you know, what Harold is saying. We need to get rid of cashless bail. We need to put criminals in jail. But until we are in a situation where that stuff is eliminated and until we have politicians who are willing to do that, and, and I, with all due respect, Harold, I don't think Kamala Harris was a great prosecutor. I think she was a horrible prosecutor. I think she laughed at the number of people that she put in jail for marijuana, and she took a few tokes herself laughing at the people that she incarcerated. So let's not make her some queen that she isn't. And Kamala fighting crime, she is the one who was putting money into getting out the 2020 bail uh, of criminals who committed violent crimes and getting them bailed out of jail. She's as much a prosecutor as I am a defense attorney. You want to see what she said about you? I could care <laughs> less. You know what? Let's have at it. I have no problem going at it. All right, Jesse. So uh, if you look at job reports, COVID, immigration, <laughs> prices, all data is junk. Greg, it's Enron-style reporting across the board everywhere. Look at the administration's flying in migrants from Venezuela to keep the border crossing numbers down. Mm -hmm. Every time you look at a jobs report, you're like, oh, wait, next month they revised it down. Oh, it's all part-time jobs. Oh, it's all migrant jobs. Mm -hmm. It's a mirage. And then inflation, they say it's going down. Prices are still going up, mm -hmm. just at a slower level. And so this is really information warfare. And as you said, the media should be reporting this instead of just repeating the propaganda from the state and then... You have a crime-riddled, divided and distrustful society that doesn't believe the politicians, the media, or the FBI. And then they wonder why there's populism on the march. Mm -hmm. Good point, Jesse. Yes, yeah, Let's yeah. march later. <laughs> All right, put on your glasses. All right, coming up, we've reached Trump derangement totality. There's that word again. An ABC star letting the Hitler comparisons fly. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.